What's good, y'all? So let's talk Love Island USA episodes 5 through... No, episodes 9 through 15. So the cast, the islanders have to have a vote on who can stay and who's going to go. And it's between Carmen and Victor, right? So Berge, he all like, he want to, he going to swing for the fences and he want to take a risk because he feel like him and uh, Carmen got this connection. So he want his chance to make something with Carmen, explore with Carmen. And so a couple people changed their vote so Carmen can stay because everybody wanted Victor to stay because Berge caused all this commotion by going back and running and telling that and getting Carmen all upset. And like when the guys in the guys' room having chats and saying things, that's supposed to stay with the guys, not for you to run back and tell the girls or tell anybody. But anyway, and then like he ran back and told her something. And as they was walking, she wanted to go pull Victor out and them three talk and iron it out. And he was like, you such a strong woman. And he wasn't just saying it to be saying it. He had her wanting to fight his battle because he was going back and saying stuff. And he was hurt and feeling um, dumb because Victor put him out there like, we teaching you. We trying to help you to build up your confidence. And we saying certain things to you. And here you are going behind our backs. Like we all here dating these same people and stuff for the most part. But you running back and telling what we say in this room. Like this guy code, like keep it in here. And she felt, Carmen told uh, Hannah that she felt some kind of way about Bergie going t telling her, oh, you such a strong woman as they walk in to go confront Victor. So she's seeing how much of a coward he really is. But you just using that as an excuse, um, Carmen. You don't like Bergie. And I don't know why y'all keep keeping this man around like y'all like him. Don't nobody like him. He looks goofy. He looks so unsure of himself. Honestly, I think Bergie is gay. And he just hasn't discovered it yet. That's what I get from him. He's so... He just... If he get out there and live some life and experience some things, I think that he will come to the conclusion that he might be gay or bisexual or something. He doesn't give me straight at all. But, um, like, completely heterosexual at all. But anyway, so that happens. Next thing you know, three new islanders come in. Jonah, Kenzo, and Emily. Two guys and a girl. Kenzo goes on two dates. He goes on a date with Hannah. And he goes on a date with, um, no. Kenzo goes, do it. Kenzo goes on a date with Anna and Carmen. But he has more of a connection with Carmen. The Jonah guy, Jonah, his family is made up of all kinds of ethnic backgrounds or whatever, right? And he runs a ranch. So he goes on a date with. Hannah and Destiny. Emily, she pulls Keenan to the side a couple times for conversation and she said it just flows so nice. She really, really likes Keenan, right? Um, but she when it's time to go on dates, she actually chooses Marco and Harrison for dates or whatever. And um when it comes time to do the recoupling and she was talking her big girl ish that she don't care. She the bombshell. She here to blow things up. She here to stir the pot. Now wash the pot, put them away or whatever, whatever. She ends up choosing. When it's time for the recoupling, Emily chooses Harrison. The way she was talking, her little speech, I thought she was going to break up um, Keenan and KK. KK and Keenan, they go to the hideaway and they do the do. The sideways salsa in the hideaway. And I'm thinking like, oh, no, girl, you shouldn't have done that. Because I can see him being, but the hideaway happened before these three new people came. It's like the very next day they come out the hideaway, the three new people came. And he all talking to KK like, we got to be open. We got to stay open. And she's like, well, damn, I just, and here you are talking about be open or whatever. And um, this is the second time that somebody came and talked to him and showed more interest in him. So it's like he keep getting chances to have to be open, but she's not. She just still stuck on him. And I get it, because she the most chocolatey, pretty thing going on here to me. But a lot of these guys that come on that show, they not checking for the, let's be real. They not checking for the chocolate sisters, you know what I'm saying? So 
they uh that happens we see leo and cassie you know they was together first and anna was really liking leo so she kept pulling him to the side and talking to him and he was swayed to give her a chance and stay open and see what she was all about but now he see what she about he still want to be with cassie so him and cassie keep going to the side having conversations um he kissed her or whatever she finds out they've been having conversations. Like one conversation she actually heard or whatever. She didn't know um they didn't know that she could hear them. So she feel disrespected. She keep going to Cassie. Then she pulled Leo to the side and tell him she ain't speaking to them no more. They being disrespectful and all this and that. And I'm like, girl, you did the same thing to her. She was with him and you was pulling him to the side for conversation and letting him know that you was really, really interested and he was your number one and all that. It's just that you really liked him and he gave it a chance just to see if y'all connect and y'all don't connect as well as him and Cassie does, even if it is just a sexual thing between him and Cassie. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, hey, shit happens. So she, she mad, and she keep trying to make Leo feel bad. She keep trying to make Cassie feel bad about it and everything. Then we see Destiny run back and tell that because they was having a conversation, her and Anna, and Destiny tells Anna, yeah, you you forgave her when you came up to pull um, her to the side to have the conversation yesterday. That was after they just finished making out. And I was like, and she was like, because I didn't want her to be walking around looking stupid. Whatever, Destiny. You trying to do some things to make sure your stuff stay right. Because I think Destiny really, really feeling Harrison. But Harrison is really, he not that into it either. She gives off all this kitten and I'm so pretty and I'm so smart and all that. Like she with it, with it. You know, in the beginning when they pursuing her. But then when they come down and lay down at night, you know how people cuddle up and do all that. She ain't really with all that. She moves super slow. And the same with Carmen was moving super slow too. But then when Carmen, when it's time for the recoupling, Kenzo picks Carmen. Jonah picks Destiny, which was great. And then that's when Emily picks Harrison. I thought Emily was going to pick Ke um, Keenan and leave KK out to dry, but he didn't. And so when it was time for the people that had already been there to say who they wanted to pick, it was four guys still standing. The first girl to stand up and say who she wanted to pick, it was Anna. And Anna was just like, you know what? I'd rather go home single. I'm not going to choose anybody because, Bergie, you like my little brother. Uh, Keenan, you like my big brother. You know, she just felt friendships with all of them. And she didn't want to be in a friendship couple. So, kudos to you for taking a high road and just going home. But you know you was wrong. Kept trying to make KK feel bad and cry. I mean, not KK, making Cassie feel bad and crying when you did the same thing to her from jump. So everybody's recoupled up. But Harrison and that Emily girl, they is into it. It was a part when they showed them laying down at night and Emily had her eyes closed and her mouth open like she was getting her oh. Harrison was doing some doodling with his fingers. He was giving her the spirit fingers under that cover. Um, Marco and Hannah got to go to the hideaway. They didn't hit a home run, but they they did everything in between the bases. So she says, um, one of the guys was like, Marco going to go in there and play around, but he ain't about that life like that. I don't got him being out there like that as far as like going there with her sexually. Then um, everybody else is in there in couples. Bergie's still alone or whatever because uh, nobody, nobody, like people like him. They feel like he's sweet and all that, like a good guy. He making breakfast for all the girls, making them chocolate chip pancakes and coffee and things. But they want to keep him around in the friend zone. Nobody's romantically interested in him. So then we see two new islanders on the way, Armani and Mike, both black. Armani said she was 22 and um, she in school and stuff like that. And America had to choose who she should go on a date with. So America chooses... For her to go on a date with Bergy. I was like, uh but every America is just really trying to give Bergy a chance. And Bergy just ain't it. <laughs> he just not. He gotta go home and come back when he got more confidence and more oomph about himself. 
Um, and they choose, uh, who was the first person they chose? KK. They choose KK to go on a date with the guy Mike. And I was so happy for her because she needed this. Because, again, Keenan had pulled her to the side after the recoupling and was talking to her about, you know, I feel like everything's been so perfect. It's been, like, too perfect. And she was telling Hannah that it's like he's been nitpicking and saying, you too agreeable. You like everything I want to do, you want to do it. So it's like he's trying to find something wrong to justify him wanting to see other people and explore more connection because they've been linked up since day one. So she finally getting her chance to go out and go, go on a date with somebody else. And then he's sitting back feeling some way about it. But that's what the hell you get. To me, I feel like she was open to the date. Her and the guy, they both live in Texas. He live in Houston. She live in Dallas. The guy said he looking for something serious right now. And all that kind of stuff like that. And he seemed cool or whatever. But I get it, KK. You got to still move at a steady pace because... The guy could be saying whatever to get in the house. I mean, he going to get in the house because when it comes time for recoupling, they're going to let him choose before they let Keenan choose. But, yeah, but who's to say he don't just pick somebody just to be in there and then another person come through and he want to like them too. So you just, it's a total wash. You just don't know how the shuffling is going to go. But he seemed to be into her. And I think, I just think KK is the cutest, sweetest little thing, the little chocolate drop. I, I love her on this show. Um, so then the people at the, uh, Love Island, like the hideaway, hideout, whatever the place is called, they all, somebody gets a text and it's cause a second round of dates are coming for these two new people. So we see that the guy, Mike wants to have a date with Destiny. So he pulls Destiny for a date and they're talking and the young lady, Armani, this time she pulls Leo for a date. And Cassie's like, like as soon as we get on a good playing field and things is good between us, something comes and shakes it all up every single time or whatever. So she feeling nervous about it or whatever. Keenan acting like he ain't nervous that KK went out. But we leave off with them on their dates and people being at the house on the island or whatever. And Fiji, as Ian, the host or announcer says, um, this season been pretty good, pretty good, a good amount of drama so far on this show. Um, and I'll be back after I let the episodes build up and watch, binge watch a bunch of episodes, and I'll come back and talk to y'all some more. I really wanted to do a short, but I just couldn't fit everything I wanted to say into a short. So, with that being said, I see y'all about to get in this house because I feel raindrops hitting me. So, peace out, y'all.